Do you want to learn how to make the most out of a multi-purpose ingredient like sucrose esters? Well today on WTF we're going to show you how to make cupcakes and even a margarita using sucrose esters. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. Here on WTF, every week we talk about unique ingredients, techniques, and show you recipes that you can get started with in your own kitchen. And today, we're going to be talking about a product from our catalog called Sucrose Esters, which um, you, if you heard of it, you may have associated with one particular function, but today we're going to show you how to use it in two different ways, and of course, a couple of really fun recipes. So Scott, can we start with a little bit of what is, what is a sucrose ester? Sure, so sucrose ester is a lot of different things, but a lot of the times people just think of it as a foaming agent. Mm -hmm. But it's a surfactant, and that basically means it can be used to emulsify foods, it can be used in baking, it can be used in cocktails. So it does a lot of really cool things, and one of the coolest things does, it does is when you mix it with sugar, it creates very, very fine crystals. So if you're trying to make something and you don't want those kind of crunchy mm -hmm. sugar crystals, it'll make an extremely fine crystal. And we'll see that when we talk about the cupcake. Yeah, and most people will come across sucrose esters, I think, from the um, saltair margarita mm -hmm. from um, Jose, Jose Andres. Andres. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. And th I th so I think one of the things we want to do today is kind of do our own take on that. Mm -hmm. What do you have for us? All right, so we'll actually start with our demo here because it's okay. really cool and it's a really simple way to kind of understand sucrose esters. So, uh, it's very simple. We're basically going to be making a margarita here and we're going to be putting a nice salt foam on top. Generally margaritas have the salt rim on mm -hmm. the edge of the glass, but if we want to incorporate the salt into every single sip and have it be uh, pretty regular throughout the entire thing, then the salt foam is a really cool presentation, garnish, and uh, functional. You know. So what I have here is I have some waters and water and sucrose esters mixed together. Mm -hmm. Now sucrose esters are water soluble or mm -hmm. cold water soluble, but if you just heat them up gently, it'll speed up the process. Generally they sink to the bottom, you have to keep whisking them a few times until they're fully incorporated in. If you just gently heat them up, then they will mix into the water very easily and you can have this done very quickly. Great. But you want to cool it down completely, see if this isn't hot at all, this is about room temperature, 70 degrees. So I'm just going to pour it in here and you can see it's just ever so slightly thickened, and that's mm -hmm. a good thing you want, <coughs> because that thickening property is going to then help make those really nice uh, stable foam on top. Mm -hmm. So with this, I'm just going to add this to the blender, and then I'm going to add in some sour orange juice, and then some salt. So this is a very small amount of salt. Uh, generally, there's recipes with much more salt. Now, I like it with less salt, it tastes <laughs> less like the ocean. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so if you like more salt, you can add, absolutely add more. It's not going to hurt the recipe. And then what I just put in there was a little bit of hot sauce powder. And hot sauce powder is going to kind of bring out all those extra flavors that we're going to find in the, uh, the margarita we're going to be making. So with this, it's very simple. Now I'm just going to blend it up. And this is where things can happen. So I'm going to get this just going on low to the point where it's starting. So Jane. We do get this question a lot, is that people try to make this foam mm -hmm. and it's not working, right? Yeah. So there's a number of different things that could happen here. One, your sucrose esters aren't fully mixed into the water. Mm -hmm. That way they're just not fully hydrated and you're not getting that full kind of thickening powder or okay. power. Two, make sure that what you're using is completely clean and completely dry. Okay. If it has any little bit of oil, oil tends to break the surface tension of all these bubbles Okay. You know, so even if you just wash it in the sink and you, and you dry it, but that sink had like a small residual little bit of you know, fat from whatever you washed mm -hmm. in there, it could be in there and it could just kill all those bubbles off immediately. Yeah. So as we're going, we can see it's kind of like this milky white color, and that is a really good sign because there is bubbles being formed. So even if I turn this off right now, you can see it's kind of holding on to those bubbles. So I'm just going to get this going for a little bit longer. And for people who um, don't come across sour oranges very much, like what do you recommend for as an alternative? That's, that's a good question because sour oranges sometimes can be found in grocery stores, sometimes they can't. Uh, so if, you're, if you can't find sour oranges, you could just substitute lime juice for this. Okay. You could just substitute orange juice for this. Or you, if you wanted that kind of sour orange flavor, you could do uh, two parts orange juice, one part lime juice. 
Okay. So that way you can have still that kind of really nice sour flavor with all the orange flavor that you're looking yeah. for. And do you recommend in this case that people always make their own fresh? Because when they buy commercial products, a lot of times they'll have different like additives and stuff yeah. in it already to keep that you know shelf life. Yeah, so especially if I'm going to be mixing it with something, I know that this is just sour orange juice. There isn't you know, an additive, there isn't a thickener, there isn't anything mm -hmm. like that. So I just make sure that I do it. And you get such a better flavor when you do that, right? Okay. Especially if you can pick the nice oranges, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to let this go till there. And I'm going to make the cocktail now. So very simply, I just have a cocktail glass. And what I'm going to be doing is adding some, some lively lime leaves to it. And just giving them a quick muddle, just right in the bottom. So I want to get those oils starting to come out of the lime leaves themselves. And this will all be strained out. But you just want to give it a little bit of a muddle and you get uh, a more complex lime flavor from mm -hmm. this okay. rather than just, you know, just putting lime juice in there. So the cocktail is very simple. I have some more sour orange juice I'm going to put in. Now I do some mezcal. I do half and half mezcal and tequila. If you prefer mezcal, you can use all mm -hmm. mezcal. Or if you prefer tequila, you can use all tequila. And then I want to give it a little bit uh, different flavor from the sugar because you can usually you do uh, simple sugar with, or simple syrup, which is just sugar and water. Mm -hmm. With this, we're going to do agave. Okay. Right. And I believe when you add agave to a uh, margarita, it's technically a Tommy's margarita. Cocktails are crazy. <laughs> There's a million names. So specific. And then, <laughs> so some sort of orange liqueur. We like the blue curacao. Because when you add the blue curacao to it, you get a nice kind of aqua green flavor, or aqua green color, <laughs> not flavor. Aqua green doesn't have a flavor. And then I'm just going to top this off with a bunch of ice. Mm. Right. And if you look inside the blender now, all that foam is sitting on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it looks really stable too, so that foam is not deflating at all. Yeah, so it's actually really amazing. Once you get that, uh, that those sucrose esters fully hydrated in that water, you can make a foam, and I've sat it on top of a cocktail and let it sit for, you know, two hours. Cocktail's never going to last that long. <laughs> but if you wanted to nurse it a little bit, you'll still mm -hmm. have that beautiful presentation the whole time. So I have my shaker cap here. And then I'm just going to shake it about 15 seconds. I'll do it without shaking it. About 15 seconds <laughs> is going to give you the best, uh, okay. you know, amount of water is going to melt off that ice and kind of hydrate the cocktail and make it not so harsh. Great. So, you pour it out and you get this beautiful color. Ooh, that's really pretty. All right. So, one thing that people also will try to do is they're going to try and scoop foam directly out of this blender. And when you're doing that, you're never really going to be able to get all that foam. So, simply, it's easy to do. Pour it into a nice clean bowl and then you can take all that foam directly off the top. Okay, and uh, sometimes we recommend that people use like Im um, an immersion blender or yep. a magic air maker. Can they do mm. that to make, if they already have those at home, can so they make yeah, a foam with, with that? So yeah, with this I would definitely suggest either a blender or, or, or an immersion blender. Okay. Um, immersion blender, you have to stand there for about five minutes to get like the entire thing completely foamy. Mm -hmm. So I just throw it in a blender and I let it go and it's going to work just fine. So okay. move this out of the way so we can see a little bit better. All right. So... We can look inside this bowl, mm -hmm. and we can see all the beautiful foam right on top of it. And as I do that, I can then skim it right off and mm -hmm. place it on. And obviously, if you don't want to use a you know, very wide margarita glass, you can put it in any glass, and you get a really beautiful presentation out of it. And the mm -hmm. longer that you blend the foam, the more uh, sturdy the foam becomes. So okay. this is actually very nice. It sits really nice on top. If you go for that, you know, five to seven minutes, you can actually make a nice presentation of like it almost piled up in the in the center to a point. It really depends on what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So if I just give it a little spin, you can see it really nicely. And the garnish is simple. It's just a little bit of orange zest and a lime leaf just, uh, you know, tacked on there. Ooh. So that's the cocktail. It's very nice. If you wanted to drink it, Janie, you absolutely could. Sure. And then we could talk about what we this did with these. This glass is so big. <laughs> it's like as big as my head. So with these cupcakes, it's very simple. Yep. We wanted to make a nice fun cupcake. So wow. the most fun cupcake out there is Funfetti. 
Mm -hmm. uh, funfetti is really simple. It's basically just a vanilla cupcake with some uh, rainbow sprinkles thrown in there. Uh, always use the store-bought rainbow sprinkles if you try to make your own fancy rainbow sprinkles. They all sit to the bottom. It's not fun. So when you make this cupcake, it's very simple. Just use any uh, cupcake mix, but we prefer if you use our cupcake recipe. It's really nice. It's super light mm -hmm. and it browns up perfectly on the outside. Mm -hmm. But when we made the frosting, we wanted to make the best frosting. So with these types of cupcakes, you want a frosting that is kind of reminiscent of the store-bought frosting, mm -hmm. but better, obviously, yep. <laughs> right? So one thing that we found is when we added the sucrose esters to an Italian meringue uh, buttercream, you had that extremely smooth buttercream you know, texture that mm -hmm. you got from a store-bought frosting, and you don't get any of those gritty crystals uh, that you would get, you know, normally if you let uh, a normal buttercream or even like a Swiss buttercream or Italian buttercream just sit there. You get kind of a little bit of crystalline texture on okay. the outside and the uh, sucrose esters make those sugar crystals so fine because when it touches that sugar, it crystallizes it very, very finely rather than those big harsh crystals and it's extremely smooth. So if you don't like those crunchy crystals, you can absolutely use uh, sucrose esters to make them super fine and really, really smooth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can get this entire recipe on our blog and yep. both of these recipes. So all the links will be in the description below. And you know, you have cocktails and cupcakes, so that's, that's a winning day. <laughs> um, so one of the things I really love about this particular cocktail is that we added the hot sauce powder to it mm -hmm. and it gave it a really kick because in our first iteration, I was just like, this tastes like I'm drinking ocean water, yeah. which <laughs> was like not my favorite but like since we reduced the salt we added a hot sauce powder it has that perfect balance of like salty and mm -hmm. spicy oh it's so good and uh this cupcake is delicious as well yeah. so um if you want to see scott making the cocktail from scratch well i guess you just did but if you want to watch it again you can get it on um our instagram right now at modernist pantry or this video will also be on this channel in a few days so from here in the modernist pantry test kitchen i'm janie wang and i'm scott garen Thank you so much for watching, and if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell so you get notified when we drop a new video. To get today's recipes and all of our recipes, remember to go to blog.modernistpantry.com where you get recipes, ask a chefs, tips and tricks, and more. And if you haven't already, tell a friend so they know what's going on here at WTF. And as always, to get any of the ingredients you saw today, you can go to modernistpantry.com to shop. And until next time, We'll be here in the test kitchen, helping you create memorable and magical experiences. <laughs>